Here, you wanna fix it? Without it turning off or something? Did you call Karen? So I think maybe that's why it was uh, But I was still there. I was trying to take it off. Of it. That's cool. I said look for your phone. 
it's going to be called discipline. You know, your body is his temple. You know what I'm saying? So our body is his temple. Uh, so I'll be dealing with that this today and next Sabbath. And I'll be, I think it will be healthy for people striving to get in as well as people in the body and just a rehearsal. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 13. There. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Let's get it. Do they shut the windows and everything? Yeah, try shutting the windows. It helps a little bit. It does. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Hey, I apologize for the Maybe we Sister could do Whitney. some. <laughs> Sister Whitney won't turn down her music. Oh, uh, maybe we'll have service in the, the kitchen next time or in the living room or something. We did it last time, that Sabbath night. Maybe we could do that. Let's get it. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, I thought it was verse 7. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, sorry. Enter ye the, the, at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which to go in. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So it says, enter the straight gate. It says the way of destruction is broad. If you go to Las Vegas, or if you go, people that in Belize, you go to Belize City where all the clubs and the resorts and whatnot, there's a lot of things, flashy lights, a lot of things attracting people that lead to destruction. Ways to make easy, money the easy way, all that lead to destruction. I'm just laying the foundation. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 13. That guy's not way too loud. He's getting annoyed. What's that? I said that it's black and but you know how to do it. You know how to make start, your voice. Start throwing rocks. Is that music too loud for you, Karen? No, I can hear you good, brother. Cool. I can hear the music too, I hear you that. <laughs> Hopefully the music compliments the teaching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That makes it more dramatic. So, uh, Luke chapter 13. So I'm like, little John. <laughs> Y'all going to hell. Yeah! <laughs> and we're going to start at verse 23. And I'm going to speed up the temple after these two scriptures. Then one said unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Now, he asked the Amashiach an important question. They say, hey, is there only going to be a few people to be saved? And he, this is what he said to him. And he, he said, strive to enter in. So I want you to go ahead and say strive. Strive. Okay. So it says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say, will seek to enter in and should not be able to. Now keep that in mind. He said, is there going to be a lot to be saved or only few? He said, strive to get enter in because there's going to be many that will seek to enter in. Now this ain't even talking about the people that believe in the Big Bang Theory or evolution. This ain't talking about the people that... Uh, believe in uh, that are atheists that don't believe in nothing. This ain't talking about the people that worship an elephant or are uh, devil worshipers or worship some false gods. This ain't even talking about them. These are talking about people that's going to seek that has a knowledge of the Bible, may not be in truth, but have a knowledge of our Mashiach dying for our sins and rose again. These people are going to seek to enter in. It says many are going to seek to enter in. Verse, uh, the next part. I say, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. When once the master of the house rise up and have shut the door and begin to stand without and to knock on the door, saying, Almighty, Almighty, open unto us, and he shall answer unto thee, I know you not from which you are. Then ye shall begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. Because these people heard the word. But he, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not, once you are, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, all you sinners out there. He's going to say, depart from me. But this is the worst part, because he, there's going to be more people 
that's going to seek to enter in, that have knowledge of the Bible and not make it in, than the people that actually obey the Bible and actually get into the kingdom. So let's keep going. Verse, this is why you're going to cry, though. Then there should be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. You're going to cry because you know if you can't get it in, you know what the other place you're going. You only go to two places. And gnashing of the teeth, why? When you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of the prophets in the kingdom of the Most High, and you yourself shall be thrust out. Now imagine, see, this is how the Almighty sets it up. He allows you to see what paradise will look like. When you get judged before him, you will see the kingdom of the Most High. And then you're going to get thrust out of it. See, what happened to Moses? Moses hit the rock. And so the Almighty says, you will not get in. But what did the Almighty do to Moses? He said, go up to this mountain. Look to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. I'll allow you to see it, but you will not enter in it. And that's how it's going to be for everyone that doesn't make it into the kingdom. This is why he says strive to enter in. For many will seek to enter in and not be able to. But let's keep going. Verse 29. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of the most high. See? And uh, I'll read verse 30. And behold, they that are last which shall be first. The wind's blowing my page, so don't bear with me. And there shall uh, be first shall be last. So... Hurry up and open it up. Let's go. Let's go. All right, cool. So, so we see right here, he's saying strive to enter in. Go ahead and say strive again. Strive. So we need to strive to enter in. Because I, if, if, if there's 10 people that want to seek the kingdom, and nine of them aren't striving, but one is, that one's going to make it, and the other nine that aren't striving, they're going to... They're going to fit into that category of people that's going to seek to enter in. And I, that scripture has to fulfill in someone's life in the day of judgment. When he says in Isaiah, he shall be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Someone had to, it happened to fall on Judas. But that scripture had to be fulfilled in someone's life. Someone had to betray the Mashiach for 30 pieces of silver. That was going to happen. Now that had to be, and, and just like it says here, many shall seek to enter in and not be able to. That will be fulfilled. But let's keep going. So, we need to strive. Uh, chapter, uh, uh, give me 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now we're going to start going a little bit faster pace because we do have a lot of scripture to cover. Timothy chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 3. Yeah. Let's get it. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yeshua Mashiach. No man that warp entangle himself with the affair of this life that he may please him who have chosen to him to be a soldier. Now, one... The people that entangle himself in this life are the people on the rocky ground or the thorny ground. And if you need to go back and read some of the Gospels to find that parable. But they get, they want to be saved, but they're too concentrated on starting this business or building this house or doing this. So they're not keeping the commandments like they should. I've seen people want to serve the Most High because they have an unbelieving wife or an unbelieving husband and they want to save their marriage, they lose their salvation with the Most High or their opportunity to be saved with the Most High because there's, they value things of this life so much to where you, you cannot serve the Almighty to your full potential because you let those things bring you down. Now, all of us are soldiers in the Most High, so we can't entangle ourselves with the things of this world. Let's keep going. And if a man shall also strive, go ahead and say strive again. Strive. Because he says strive to enter in, right? He says strive to enter in. Now it says if a man also strive for mastery, which is what are we trying to get? Salvation. Yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? The only way we get the crown of life, the only way we make it into the kingdom is if we do it lawfully. We got to do it right, acceptable to the most high. So 
When you say someone is striving, that means it's not easy. If I'm running one mile and I run the mile in 30 minutes, could you say that that's striving? For some obese, overweight people, yeah, you could. But for the majority of people, you could walk, the average person could walk a 10 minute mile. You could walk a 10 to 15 minute mile. So for me to say, yeah, I'm, I ran a, a 30 minute mile, I ran one, you didn't strive. But for you to just run a, a seven minute mile, an eight minute mile, a six minute mile, yeah, you're striving. It takes diligence. And you might even have to train. You may not get it the first time or the second time or even the 10th time. You may have to train to get to enter in. So let's keep going. Give me a 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to uh, go with verse 24. It says, Know ye not that they which run in the race run all. So everyone runs all. But one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. So we just read in Matthew or in Luke, it says, Strive to enter in, for many shall want to enter in and shall not be able to, right? Now, it says when you run a race, many's trying to get to first place, just like many's trying to be saved. Pour it all in there. Hurry up. I'm tired of hearing rappers. Let's go. Take both the rappers, put it on the floor. Yep. Yep. Grab them, grab them. All of them, all of them. Yours too. Yours too. Let's go. Let's go. You're going to have to switch it up. You're switching the game. You're just going to pour it all out, out of the rappers and stuff. There we go. All right, now just put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. Put it on. Just put it on. There you go. Good job. All right. Back to. Hopefully, I can get my train of thought again. So, uh, just like it says, many shall run this race, but only one gets the prize. Many's going to try to enter into the kingdom, like we just read in Matthew, but only a few's going to make it in. Everyone says they're working for salvation. Everyone. Solo, you need to calm that down too. Anyways, our dog was coughing. So, not everyone's going to make it in. Now, verse uh, 24. Verse 25. And everyone that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now that they do it, that they maintain a, a, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. So what's, they, they're temperate in all things. Like when you see a doctor, they go to school. They don't go out and party and they can't go out with their friends because they're in the books. And you see a runner, they're careful on their diet. You see a football player, everyone that's striving for mastery to get something corruptible like a trophy or get some money or get some whatever, a medal, whatever they're trying to strive for, get fame, fortune, a record, anything they're trying to do, they're tempering in all things so they can obtain this corruptible prize. But we're trying to attain salvation, an incorruptible prize. We're trying to obtain a true relationship with the Most High. So they've got to be temperate, temperate in all things. Oh, I want to lose weight. I train people. People want to lose weight, and then they tell me all the time, yeah, I think the hardest thing, man, is for me to give up my rice and beans or me to do this or me to do that. And you have to be temperate if your goal is to lose a certain amount of pounds, but you're not trying to be temperate in these things, then how are you going to obtain the goal? So it all boils down to salvation. It boils, it boils down to discipline. That's what it all boils down to. Because whenever you're trying to overcome sin, and I'll, I'll use this before I get to that point. It's all about self-control. Let's, let's say a sinner. See, we will make excuses not to obtain an incorruptible crown. People will make excuses why they can't obey, why they can't overcome sin, why they can't fully repent, why they can't fully commit to the Most High. But when they want to have self-control and discipline, they do it. Look at the people, like I said, that go to college or play a sport, or if I do this, I can be a baseball player and get a $1.5 million deal. When the benefit is super high, these sinners can have self-control. And, and let's say these sinners go out and want to have unprotected sex. There are sinners out there that will wrap it up because they don't want to get an STD. STD. So when, when the penalty or the risk is so high, 
then don't use self-control. They're like, ah, nope, I don't want to take the chance. Even though it feels better, even though it's better, nope, I don't want to take the chance. But then when it comes to salvation, they make all these excuses of why they can't. Oh, it's too much. Oh, the Almighty's still working on me. Oh, I'm trying. Oh, I keep failing. They make every excuse why they don't want to have self-control and discipline when it comes to salvation. But when it comes, I guarantee you, if I went to a thousand people, I say, hey, check this out. I'll pay you. Stop that. I'll pay you a thousand dollars a week. All you got to do is not eat pork. You can't celebrate Christmas, Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving. You can't celebrate any of that stuff. Uh, you have you can't work at Friday at sunset to Saturday at sunset. You have to stop cussing. You have to stop drinking, and you have to stop smoking weed. And I'll pay you three thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life. People will do that. Atheists will do that. They're like, you're gonna pay me three thousand dollars, and that's all I have to do. Oh yeah, you can't cheat on your wife. And you, you know, you can't do this. And you can just give them the Ten Commandments. And I, I bet you if I paid someone $5,000, $3,000 a week, they will keep the whole ten. They'll keep the Sabbath. They won't be celebrating Christmas. They'll keep that. But then when you come to us serving the Most High, I've seen people that say they believe in the Almighty. Then they use excuses why they break the Sabbath. No self-control, no discipline. Oh, well, I really need the money, and I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to start my business. I'm this and that. Most of my job, I own the moving company, and the majority of people want to move on Saturdays. Hey, I may lose out in money, but I didn't lose out of my relationship with the most high. I'm running my race, and my race has nothing to do with my moving company, with my job, with my relationship, with my wife. My race is to salvation. I'm running a race to be saved. That's the race I'm running. Uh, running. So anything, I don't entangle myself with the cares of this life that I may please him that chose me to be a soldier. When you go to the battlefield, I don't need to be worrying about uh, uh, if your wife is cheating on you when you're in the trenches and you're in war. You don't need to be worried about your mom that died and whatnot. I need to be focused on the battle girl. I'll deal with that when I get back, when I get deployed back home. I need to concentrate on who chose me to be a soldier and concentrate on my objective. And then that's the problem. It's self-control. For, for you to be saved, you have to have some level of self-control and discipline because that's going to overcome the flesh. That is what gets you to... When you... When someone that is an atheist is able to stop drinking and smoking drugs, weed, alcohol, whatever they're doing, they're able to pull off and stop doing that. Indirectly, they stop sinning. And atheists just stop sinning in the area of being a drug user or alcoholic. They go to their meetings. What do they develop? They develop self-control. So if an atheist could do it, and you know the word, what is taking people so long to repent from their sins? Why aren't you trying to develop the discipline that the Almighty is requiring you to have to live holy and living clean? It, it amazes me how some things really don't take that long. Some things do. It took me like three months to stop cussing. It took me like three months to give up alcohol. I know people that gave up alcohol cold turkey and gave up cigarettes cold turkey. And some people, they nigger at patch. They're repenting. They went from a pack a day to three quarters to half a pack. And after a couple of months, they stopped. And they were able to get baptized and go on to salvation. Lord willing, right? So you should always have that self-control and self-discipline. Let's keep going. Give me Job. Verse 36. Uh, What's the comment say? Ben said, thank you for letting Kamari use her shirt. Thank you to Kamari for letting you use his shirt. Kamari's shirt. Who? What? Ben said, thank you, Kamari, for letting Simon use your shirt. This is his shirt? No. But Ben's is Connor. Oh, but he's man, late. He's saying his shirt. But he's late, so don't worry about it. Joe, all right, he's late to service. No self control. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no discipline. Hey, make sure you late. This is what I like telling because sometimes and you'll be late. Hey, if you're going to be late to Sabbath service, make sure you late Monday morning. Go late to work. Because if you're going to be late to the Most High, make sure you be late to the center man that you work for. If you're going to be late to the Most High, make sure you be late to the center man. Don't treat center man 40, give center man 40 hours. You can't give the Almighty his hours and his time. So let's keep going. I ain't going to be mad at me because I told on him. <laughs> like, thou shalt not snitch. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, thou, thou tell, tell bearer. <laughs> Job 36, we're going to say verse 10. 
He opened also their ear to discipline and commanded that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they spread their he, he shall spend their days in prosperity and their ears in pleasure. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and shall die without knowledge. But it says the Almighty, as we read the whole scriptures, as we get into prayer and see the Almighty, because I just dealt with the problem of lack of discipline and also uh, self-control. But the solution is we need to immerse ourselves in these holy scriptures because it says he opens he opens our ears to discipline. We I've learned through reading, not even through the minister teaching on the Sabbath, through reading. It says, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not in the righteousness of the most high. So there's times where I'm upset or I want to lash out, and that scripture will come to my mind. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. There's a scripture, hey, render not evil for evil, brethren for brethren. If someone rails you, are they cussing at you, whatnot? You don't have to say a, a nasty remark back. You know what I'm saying? It says, hey, you, uh, it says, uh, be angry and sin not. So if a situation arises and you want to, you know, take it to level 10, like the guy that's playing this music, and I really want to come aggressive, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to come. I think I'm going to come like a, you know, how I really want to come. I, he deserves that. Because he just plays at 6 in the morning in disregard for it. He's pretty much giving everyone on the street the middle finger. Dude, 6 in the morning, that's blatantly disrespectful. So I really want to just come aggressive versus he started at like 9 or something. Or he goes to 2 in the morning sometimes. Like, hey, man, can you keep it within reason? I want to be like, hey, what is your problem? Well, you know, and then he's going to play it more. But then it's like, all right. It seems naturally it's like, all right, we want to go to war. But it says, once again, we're not evil for evil because I just want to cut the power off the house. Now your refrigerator and your freezer don't work. Now you got other problems. And it's like, yeah, you should have just go ahead and been respectful to your neighbors. But that would be rendering you for evil. But that's a prime example of how it's not my will, let his will be done. So hopefully he turns it down. We'll be praying on that. I'll probably talk to him maybe uh, sometime next week. But anyways, going, uh, going from there. It says he opens our ears to discipline. As we read and as we pray, and even if you're struggling with the sin, this is where fasting comes in. It says to break the bands of wickedness, that you break every yoke. If you feel that sin has such a tie on your life, whether it's things you watch or things you listen to or people you hang out, fast. Get off the TV. Get off the Facebook. Get off this. Get off all that stuff. Fast. No food. No water. Find a nice little closet. Lock yourself up and fast. Go to work. Come back and just fast. Just do your thing. Focus on the Most High. And if you really seek the Most High here, fast the Almighty, give me the strength because I'm really trying to break this cigarette habit. Give me the strength. I, I really want to be with this lady, but she's a sinner and we just got to break. She ain't trying to serve the Almighty. Give me the strength to just cut ties to this relationship because this is being not unequally yoked with them, but together with the unbeliever. For what fellowship righteous with them righteous? What can you light with darkness? You, you might run in these hard situations where it's hard for you to break off. Then the Almighty might orchestrate it. He might put something in the way because you prayed that to where all of a sudden the relationship stops or all of a sudden the, the guy fires you and you think that's a bad thing, but that could be the best thing that happened in your life. He may give a situation to where it, the next thing you know, uh, you have a cigarette habit and he gave you COVID or let's use that example. You lost your taste and every time you taste a cigarette now it makes you nausea and you throw up, so you give up cigarettes. And I'm using this as a, an extreme example, but I'm saying the Almighty could put things in your life to get you to live holy and get you to live righteous, but you have to have the want and the need. This is why he opens our ears to discipline. So let's keep going. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Verse 24. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Or, never mind. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> it says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth his son chastise him often. It says, If you spare the rod, you hate your son. Now, now the purpose, the purpose of chastising your children is so they can learn a level of discipline, a level of self-control. I want to eat these cookies, but when I went in this cookie jar and I took these cookies, not only I stole, but then I did something against my parents' will, and this is the reaction I came. 
So now when they leave the house and I'm at the home by myself, I am not going to steal cookies out of the cookie jar because it's not worth the risk. There is the benefit is not high enough for me to go ahead and take that risk. And so they learn self-control at the age of two and four and six and eight and ten all the way into their adulthood. And the goal is to get them to learn discipline and self-control when they become adult. And that's why we chast chastise our children while they're a child. So it says you use the rod of correction and you do it often. It says be times mean often. And especially I'm going to side note this because I got side note when I was studying this morning. All the, oh, I don't want to spank my kids. And oh, 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 I got something for you. Go ahead and give me, um, it says if you don't spank them, it says you hate your children. Like I had to uh, give a spanking out the other day. Whenever my, ch this is the rule I will suggest for everyone, every parent across the whole planet. Whenever your kid sins, automatic rod of correction, automatic spanking. If they lie, spanking. If they steal, spanking. If they do something, obviously you won't go in the room and they got an altar and they're burning a straight ox until a false god or nothing. No, obviously we know there's just something they ain't just going to do it. But if they sin, automatic rod of correction. Because the Almighty tells me to do that. If they didn't finish all their homework or they stuffed their clothes in their drawer and didn't fold them, I'm not saying you got to use the rod of correction. Sometimes confiscation of goods or imprisonment, you go to your room. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do. But when it comes to sin, automatic rod of correction. And sometimes I've seen parents think that they're smarter than the Most High and think that they're better parents than the Most High. The Almighty created Adam and Eve and everyone after that and knew us from the foundation of the world and he put, use the rod to correct your kids. This is what he told us. And he said, oh yeah, do it often. So let's keep going. Give me Proverbs chapter 22. Well, I don't want to. I, I get it. If you're in the states, if you're in the states, you got to use wisdom. You go ahead, use the rod, use the belt, put it on the hands. Or do, there's some stuff. Have them some pants where it still steams them, but leaves no marks. I get it. CPS be trying to come hard in the states, but you, there's ways to do it. There's ways to do it to where they learn, and you don't have to worry about CPS coming to the door. There's solutions to that. Uh, Proverbs 22 verse 15. It says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from them. If they get beat good enough, they'll stop doing it. They'll stop doing it. And if they keep doing it, just amp it, amp it. Every time it's going to be worse. There's some things that if my kid keeps doing, they, they know, okay, this is what level? All right, we're going to amp it. It's going to increase the intensity until you figure it out. You're going to break before I will. You will break that habit before I will break and, and just give up. You know what I'm saying? I will break you before you break me. That's not going to happen. I'm an adult and you're a child. I will break you and your spirit of disobedience before I will break. It's not going to happen. So, hey, right here it says, verse 22, chapter 22, verse 15, it says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far. So, have you ever had some people come over and they got some disobedient kids and you just don't want the kids over? because they just don't discipline, they, they breaking and drawing and doing this and hitting other kids and this and this. And then the parent only says, oh, just don't do that. They give them like a, a light reprimand. Don't do that no more, okay? And the kid just like brushes off and keeps doing it. And then now their kids are beating up on your kids or breaking your kids' toys or doing, and there's no severity to, to their reprimand. And you're like, man, I don't even want the kid over no more. That kid's too bad. And it's not even the kid's fault. It's because the parents have a lack of discipline. The parents, oh, I don't want to spank my kids, or I don't want to. They think they're smarter than the Most High. It says, just like heaven is above earth, neither are my ways your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. I think the best parent in the world is the Most High, and he said, use the rod of correction. He corrected us and sent us in the Babylon. He corrected us and sent us into captivity. He knows how to correct his children. Let's keep going. Uh, chapter 23, Proverbs 23, 13 and 14. It says, withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beateth him with the rod, he shall not die. It's, he might, man, I got spanked with extension cords. I had welts on my hand. All those marks are gone. They're all on my forearm, the little bubbles of blood and whatnot. When I was a little kid, they're gone. My mom used to beat, my dad used to beat me. And now I'm serving the Almighty. No cussing, no drinking, no telling lies, no committing adultery. Now I'm keeping the Sabbath. My mom used to discipline me. My dad used to discipline me good. 
So then now what happened? And you can say, oh yeah, there's a lot of kids that got weapons and went away, but maybe they had to improve their level of parenting on the discipline aspect. So, hey, I didn't die. I'm still alive. I got all my eyes and my fingers and whatnot. It says, use the rod of person. They ain't gonna die. Yeah, they might cry a little bit and cry loud and have some little bruises and whatnot. Hey, they ain't gonna die. They'll be all right. You still feeding them, they still, hey, I give my kids spankings and they have plenty of Nerf guns and electric scooters and they have way more toys than I have. Kitchens and a whole bunch of stuff. They have a whole bunch of stuff. A chest full of toys and they eat good. Everything's good, they healthy. They get their four meals and three meals and it's two snacks. They, they get treated real good. But I discipline my kids. It doesn't mean you neglect your kids or you don't love your kids and you don't teach your kids and spend time with your kids, but you use the rod of correction. Let's keep going. The Almighty loves us, but he chastised us. Let's keep going. Give me a first uh, chapter 29. Chapter 29. Verse 15. It says, The rod and reproof giveth wisdom, but a child left him himself, bringeth his mother shame. And I like this scripture because you parents out there are the reasons why there's rapists. You're the reasons why there's murderers and, and thefts and home evasions. Now there's some kids that grow up out of a good household and they do become criminals. But the majority of kids that go out and do that is because of lack of discipline. Because when they stole a little a cookie and then they stole a cookie and you ask your kid when he's six or eight or ten, did you steal the cookie out of the cookie jar? And he says, who me? And I said, yes you. <laughs> and he says he lies to me and say, couldn't it be? And then I said, then who? And then he lies and says it's someone else, like their sister. Let's say that, that happens, right? So not only they stole and they lie, and you just don't do that. Don't do that no more. You don't get used to the right of correction. You don't discipline. And so that kid from 10 years old becomes 14 years old. And they see the ice cream truck coming all the time, and they have no money. So guess what? That same kid that you could have disciplined at 10, now he steals money out of your wallet. And guess what? When he gets 16, now he's stealing little candies out of the store when he comes home from school. When he's in high school, he's stealing a little candy out of the store. And that's what? He's stealing boss hats and clothes. Or, and, and see how this progressed? To now, your kid's 25, 27, and he's in prison for armed robbery. But where did that stem from? Because you didn't discipline your kid and have him develop self-control and, and discipline as a kid, and he took that to his adult. And then, oh man, oh man, now you're ashamed. Yeah, I have a son. Oh, where's your son at? Oh, oh, oh yeah, he's in prison. Yeah, he'll, he'll get out in a couple years, but he's doing good. He, he's in school, he's getting his GED in prison, and you try to fluff it up and make it seem like your kid. Oh, but he's getting his GED in prison, and he's, he's going and he's taking college classes in prison, and you try to make the story sound better, but deep down, you know you just failed your kid because you didn't discipline him and give him self-control and give him uh, and let him learn discipline so he can take it into his adulthood. So let's keep going. Now that I'm off the sidetrack of discipline, these people that think they're smarter than the most high. So let's get back to um, beat your kids and uh, having uh, self-discipline. Back to uh, self-discipline. Give me Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25. I think next one you got a part two of this, you guys gonna like, because we're gonna deal with our temple. Because some people, a lot of people I see be doing some stuff to the temple they shouldn't. So the part two is going to be nice. Don't miss that one as well. Proverbs chapter 25. And we're going to go with uh, verse 27. It says, It is not good to eat too much honey. So for man to seek their own glory is not good. So why isn't it not good to eat too much honey? Or why isn't it not good to let your kids eat a whole bunch of candy or whatnot? We're going to do this one time to tomorrow, uh, next Sabbath. Because you know that that sugar is bad and that um, the bacteria that eats off the sugar in your mouth causes plaque, which causes cavities. So it says to seek your own glory, but verse 28. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. 
if you don't have self-control and rule over your own sin, over your own spirit, this is where sin manifests. It all starts in the mind. Before you commit sin, it starts in the mind. So if you can control the way your mind thinks, what happens is, like a, a prime example, let's use the neighbor playing music that he turned it off because I'm about to talk to him. But he turned it back on now. So maybe he would switch tracks. So this guy's playing music. Now, if I was in the world, I already know where his power box is. I'll just mess up his power box and he just don't have power for the whole house. I'll go to him and say, hey, turn that stuff off. You're being disrespectful and this is what it is. And then he probably won't do it out of rebelliousness because I came at him offensive and so he put up his wall and he'll play, probably play it loud. And then two days later when he doesn't have power and it costs like $2,000 to get a, replace that box he has, a transfer box or an electrical box to your own house that's on the side of the house, he gonna look and I'm gonna look and we gonna make eye contact and say, let the war begin. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's when you don't have self-control, because that's what mentally comes to my mind. But who do I serve? I serve the most high. And so it says, render not evil for evil. It says, be not a brawler. It says, seek peace and holiness with the, without which no man can seek the almighty. It says, uh, uh, seek peace and holiness without which no man can see the almighty. And it says, with all that is in you, be at peace with all men. Me knowing these scriptures, Bring self-discipline and self-control. So now when I do approach this situation, how my flesh wants to versus how the Almighty wants to is two different things. So I need to have the same testimony that Amashiach has. And what was his testimony? Not my will that thy will be done. So every day as we live my, I live my life, it's not my will that his will be done. I wake up in the morning, my will, I want to just cut this guy's power off. It's not my will, Almighty. You know what I want to do, Almighty, but I'm not going to do it because I'm your ambassador and I'm just going to try to do it how you want me to do it. You know? So it says, the wrath of man works not in the righteousness of the Almighty. So too, usually they use too much power. When we use our own wrath, we use too much power. U.S. will lose in the war, so what did they do? They dropped nuclear weapons on innocent women and children to beat Japan. They, they, they use wrath. They go too far. Just like Babylon went too far with us, just like slavery, even though we disobeyed, they went too far. So Almighty's going to condemn it. But the Almighty's righteous. And when he passed judgment, it's righteous judgment. When we pass, oh, you did that to me? I'm going to do that to you. And it just goes back and forth, and usually someone goes too far. So let's keep going. Give me a, oh, let's do the shout outs. So it all starts in the mind. Shout outs! Okay, I'll get her. <laughs> Give me your phone then. I don't have it. You don't have the shout outs? Someone. Sorry, normally someone doesn't have discipline giving our shout outs. No self discipline. Two people dropping the ball at Trudy United. You're the one person. Vince was late to service. No, he wasn't late. He said he just didn't comment. So then I told him, what would you do if you showed up to work, but then you didn't clock in <laughs> on time? And he's like, yeah, I've been here. I'd say clock in. So you're going to find the shout outs? Why do you keep rocking? I can't. I can't. It, when I, because you do live, it brings the live feed and it won't let me. I have to do all it. All right. So everyone, a shout out to all those that watched last service. <laughs> Some people dropping the ball. <laughs> dropping the ball. So, okay. It all starts in the mind. Now, I'm going to show you. Oh, go ahead. All right. So I'm going to. You're good. Go ahead. You can talk. I'm going to show you in the mind how if we control the mind, we control the whole body. James, we're almost done here. Give me James. Let's start timing. Oh, we're looking good. James uh, chapter 1, verse 13. Chapter 1, verse 13. And let's get it. Let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of the Most High. Like when I heard guys say, Man, Almighty, why you bring these beautiful women to me if you didn't want me to fornicate? Yeah, no, that's called self discipline and control. You, you just gotta self regulate yourself. Let's keep going. For the Almighty. Uh, cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempted any man. He don't tempt any man. He put the 
He put the tree in there and said, don't touch it. He wasn't tempting them. He said, this is mine, don't touch it. Just like if I have my wallet or my money in the house and I tell my kids, don't go in my wallet or don't go in the room or don't eat this food, I'm not tempting them. Don't do it. It's yes, yeah, right in front of your face. Don't touch it. And I don't care if the cake's on the, on the dining table. Don't touch it unless you talk to me. Let's keep going. Uh, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And then when he left it, he had conceived it, so it started in the mind, and it bringeth forth, uh, uh, then when he, uh, when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, because the wage of sin is death. Verse 16, do not err, my brother, beloved brother. It says once you, once you, you get lust, you conceive it. And once you conceive it, it bringeth forth sin. And once sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. There's no t no person just not thinking about it just falls into sin. They knew that, man, I'm not supposed to work on this day, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm not supposed to steal. I'm not supposed to lie, but I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to get a spanking. I'm going to go ahead and tell a lie. They conceived the lie, and it brings forth sin. And once sin is finished, it brings forth death. This is why it says, if you don't use the rod of correction, you hate your children. Because you ain't trying to save your children from the lake of fire. Let's keep going. So... It says once you conceive it. So if we can control the mind, the whole body will follow. If we can start with discipline in the mind and self-control in the mind, then the body will follow. And then you'll keep all the commandments. You'll serve the most high on your way up to glory. Let's keep going. Give me a Proverbs 24. They're probably like, man, I'm tired of hearing these Proverbs about spanking your kids. I noticed our children got super quiet when we was hitting those scriptures. <laughs> Did we was any other scriptures they were kind of whispering, talking? As soon as it goes, spanking the kid. No, that can't be true. That's not in the Bible, is it? Oh, they know. Proverbs 24. And verse 9. Proverbs 24, verse 9. <laughs> The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. So, they use this a lot. Mainly Christians use this scripture a lot. It's like, oh, see, you can't be perfect. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness. See, the difference is the thought of, of me turning off that guy's power off will come. But I don't entertain that. You can't, I can't choose, I can't choose like that, kind of like a proverb. You can't control if a bird lands on your head, but you can control if the bird builds a nest. So when the thought comes, it says, hey, I rebuke that thought in Yeshua's name. You don't entertain those thoughts, those thoughts of lust, or those thoughts of going back to a cigarette, or those thoughts of drinking again. All those thoughts of sin, those thoughts will always come. Those thoughts of uh, fornication, we're, as a man, I'm drawn to the opposite, and as a woman, they're drawn, they're supposed to be, some of them are gay and whatnot and doing an abomination, but we're naturally going to have those thoughts of being attracted to the opposite, but you don't entertain those thoughts. You don't let that uh, marinate into your mind, because once you do conceive it, once that thought turns into a conception, it says it bringeth forth sin, and once sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. So when those thoughts come, hey, I rebuke that thought. All that thought's not of the Most High. I, I'm not even going to pay that thought no mind. And I'll prove it. Let's keep going. Give me a, give me a Second Corinthians chapter ten. chapter 10 verse 5 it says for our weapons of our warfare are not carnal and it can't be because we have the war in our mind we are trying to build self control and discipline in our mind so it cannot be carnal it cannot be a physical thing we don't need to go to Eli Musk and tell him to put a microchip to where we don't want to commit sin let's keep going 
but mighty through the almighty to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, things in the mind, and every high thing that exalted himself against the knowledge of the almighty. So when these things come to our mind, these imaginations, man, I really want to size this dude up right now. You know what I'm saying? These things, and you start imagining, okay, you're going to roll up. I'll, I'll give him a left, a two-piece, and a biscuit, and then he's down on the ground, right? Give him a two-piece. These imaginations come to mind, right? It says, and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Amashiach. So through the Ruach condition, through the word, we could cast down every imagination that exalted himself against the knowledge of the Most High. If these things come to our mind and it's against the Holy Scripture, we cast those things down. And bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Most High. And if we could bring every thought to the obedience, then how do we conceive it? And then it doesn't bring forth sin. And once sin is finished, it brings forth death. Because once these thoughts come, they get casted down. So we never conceive it. We never let these imaginations manifest to where now we're acting out what we were manifesting, what we are conceiving. Let's keep going. So in return, what happens when you cast every thought to the obedience of the Most High? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 9. This is what happens when you do this. First Corinthians chapter 9, and we want to go with verse 27. Because we just read, once you lust, lust, you conceive it. And once you conceive it, it bringeth forth sin. And once sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. So now, when you cast every imagination down and you bring it into captivity, verse 27 kicks in. But I keep under my body... And bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So he says, I keep my body in subjection to the Most High. That way when I preach to others, I myself am not a castaway. I can't preach against adultery and I'm sleeping with other man's wife. I can't preach against lying and I'm telling lies. He says, I put this body in subjection. And there's no way you could put this body in subjection if you're not bringing into captivity every high thought and imagination that exalts itself against the, uh, the, uh, the knowledge of the Most High. He had to control the mind before he could control the body. And so by default, if we learn self-control and discipline, just the basic thing of reading three chapters every day to finish the Bible in a year, three chapters, 15, 20 minutes a day, just learning that, just discipline yourself to read every day. How do you know teacher Simon is not a false preacher? You have to read. So if you're going to be at True Hebrews United and you don't read, what if I fall? What if I go the ways of Balaam, which was a true righteous prophet, and he turned away? Are the ways of Solomon, we just dealt with it, or are the other ones that they started off right? What if five years from now I go false, but because you don't read, you follow me? If the blind leads the blind, what happens? Both of them fall in a ditch. He said the Pharisees, they go from sea to sea to make one proselyte, and they make them twice full the child of hell than themselves. So reading is, is very important. I wanted to use a big word, but none came to my mind. Very important <laughs> to your salvation. Avitations? No, it was not avitations. I wanted to use, like, super important word. Super important. Super duper important <laughs> to your salvation. Sequential. Or something. So, anyways, so last two scriptures. Last two scriptures. <laughs> Matthew chapter seven. That you ever have where you want to use a better word, but then you don't. So you got to revert to your high school words, your uh, remedial reading words. Uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse thirteen. Last two scriptures. Matthew chapter seven, verse thirteen. Let's get it. It says, enter ye the straight gate. The other one in Luke says, strive to enter in. It says, for broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many a beat which go therein. But because the straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, few there be that find it. Remember, it says, few that be there find it right here. But the, Luke 17 said, many shall strive to enter in, and shall not enter. Many shall seek to enter in, and shall not enter. So there... Just imagine this. Let's say out of let's say out of 
seven million people. Let, let's say I, I, I'll just use a thousand. So let's say there's a thousand people in the world, right? Out of that thousand people, no, we won't even use a thousand. Let's use, let's use a hundred thousand. Out of that hundred thousand people, right, of the whole world, only a thousand people probably actually believe in the Bible. Actually believe that Amashia came down. Most of the people heard of it and really don't believe. Oh, oh. So then out of that thousand, then you got all these denominations of the Catholic, Methodist, Episcopalians, all this. You got all these people. And then out of that, when you get through all these false churches, you got the few people that's going to make it in. But out of, out of the few people that actually believe that on this planet, most of those people are going to seek to enter in and not get in. And that's just the people that actually believe that the Bible is true. They just don't want to obey it or they're just a Baptist or a Catholic or something. They believe in the Bible. Some people are actually just actually trying to obey, but they're just a Baptist and in false doctrine. So only many people is going to seek to enter in but not be able to. And it says few find the ways of life. Last scripture, First Peter. Chapter 4. Last scripture, First Peter chapter 4. How are we doing our time? We're good. A little over. A little over. First Peter chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 18. First Peter chapter 4, verse 18. It says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? With all your righteousness of not cussing, not drinking, not telling lies, keeping the Sabbath, not celebrating Christmas, not eating pork, all these other stuff, right? Out of all this stuff, we striving to live holy, live clean. If we barely, we scarcely make it in, what makes you think if you're kind of cutting corners in your walk with the Most High? If you're cutting corners in the Most High, and Moses was faithful in all his house, and he's going to make it, and you have Daniel that's going through lion's dens, and you have Meshach and Benno going through flame and furnaces, and Jeremiah getting tossed in dungeons, and Ezekiel losing his wife and standing for the God. You have all these holy people living righteous and giving their 100% to the Most High to make it into the kingdom. And you're sitting here cutting corners, barely reading, barely keeping the set. Sometimes you slip up and break the set. Sometimes you do this. Sometimes you watch this. Sometimes you say this. Sometimes you go there. You, you cut in super corners and you expect to get the same reward as Daniel? And I'm not, not talking about the special rewards in heaven. I'm just talking about the basic reward that every person in the kingdom will get eternal life and salvation. And you expect to get the same reward as the people that gave 100% and you're giving 78%? It says if the righteous scarcely make it in, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of the Almighty came in to keep in their souls to him and well-doing unto a faithful creator. We got to discipline ourselves. It's tight, but it's right. Either we go all the way or we go all the way to the lake of fire. It's tight, but it's right. You know what I'm saying? There's situations we got to give up. We got to give up. We got to pick up. We pick up. We put down. We put down. We got to pick up. Put down sin. You put it down. You got to pick up righteousness. We pick it up. Wherever the Almighty leads us, we got to do it. Because I want you guys to be saved. I want my children and my whole family to be saved. I want us to make it in. I don't teach a prosperity gospel. I don't teach a gospel to say, hey, I want to put a hundred and five, ten thousand bucks in, 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 his, in his congregation. That probably would never happen. And I'm not asking for that. I'm saying this gospel isn't to, to make money. This gospel is to save souls. That's what the apostles and the prophets and the evangelist teachers that came before me did. And I'm just picking up their torch and entering into their labors. Telling people to repent from their sin and come to this gospel before it's everlasting too late. Let's get into these scriptures. Read, pray. If there's sin you're doing, you need to fast. One, two day. No food, no water. Fast from that. Hey, if you know Facebook is drawing you in and you're not reading as much, then hey, turn off the Facebook so you can get some more scriptures in that chapter, in that book. Get into that book. The, the Almighty can talk to you through the scriptures. Whenever I pray, I feel I don't get no answer. Read the book then. 
He'll talk to you through the scriptures. He'll tell you the same thing he's going to tell everyone else. Be ye holy for I am holy. He'll tell you how to overcome sin. He'll tell you how, how to raise kids. We just read how to raise kids. Beat them. Pretty much, that's it. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But, you know, he'll teach you everything you need. How to be a business, how to not have out of it. Oh, what do I do? My son's lazy. It says, hey, a sluggard is an abomination. Start reading scriptures. Start having them read scriptures. Start having them work. While he's lazy, have him do work to get his toys now. Now you got to work for every single toy you get, son. You're 12 years old or whatever. For everything you get, you need to work for now. And let him learn this. Let him learn. Oh, I can't let my son be a sluggard, so I need to get him the kind of, oh, you want you want to uh, watch TV? Then clean the house. If for you to get a benefit in life, son, it's going to take labor. It says by the sweat of your brow. Let him learn that he needs to do this when he gets an adult. So we are teaching our children to become proper adults, living righteous and holy, and be good husbands and good wives. And so what are we doing? How are we raising them? So everything is in the Holy Scriptures. With all that said, be it done. Keep standing. Don't drop standards. Give the Almighty hand clap. Shalom. Oh, news, news. New news. Shalom, it's too late. Shalom. Welcome everyone to True Hebrews United. This is True Hebrews United Lawyers. You can reach the 619-513-75. I uh, appreciate you guys. Facebook, YouTube, get on the mic. News. Let's get some news up here. Go ahead. Come up here, Kamar. Come on here. Don't lay for my hair. It's my mom's fault. Mm -hmm. Alright. Go ahead. My mom's fault. So why are you trying to stand by me? It's cool. Don't be on your tippy toes. You would never be taller than me. Um, Sorry. You. Well, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Look, my shoes are on the ground. Go ahead. Mom. Go. 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 Because you're trying to play with the light and it looks taller than me. Go ahead. Where's our news? Where's our, where's our news? Go, go, go. Hey, go sit down. Oh, yeah. Go clean up that water. Go, Mom, clean up the water. Drop standards. Live holy. Or die. Try. Live holy or die trying. <laughs>